I'll be sure not to let him take advantage of me so easily. Why not? Let him Do take it. advantage of Do you it. Let easily. him take advantage harder. Yeah, make it even easier. It's better, better Flynn than us. We were just joking about how, like, fucking... <laughs> oh, remember last time we were about to get railed against a, a truck and then the player character to come in and ruin it and our boyfriend noticed and Yeah, we, we, we fucked up. We were being yeah. uh, voyeurs and he, we got caught, yeah. guys. We got caught. We ruined the sexy time. <laughs> the idea that Flynn's not even We caught blocked the idea that Flynn's not even bothered by the idea that something fucked up is happening in the background, but it's just the fact that somebody else can see. Like, he's, he's just really private, actually. It's like, why do I get this feeling like two, like, YouTube commentator people yeah. are watching me try to fuck you right now? He's just, can you hear the mumbling just in the background? Like, I'm in one people, you're the other people. We're just staring. <laughs> staring out. You just see us from the inside. We're headed down Elizabeth Street after dropping Carl off. The drive only a little awkward. Flynn's really good at acting like nothing is wrong when he wants to, and I'm totally fine with that right now. That's when I see a set of familiar ears through the window at the convenience store. Hey, is that TJ? You can't miss those ears. Just miles long. They're billboards. Flynn ducks his head, look out the window. Looks like it. He flips a U-turn, which... Isn't a big deal since no one's on the road and pulls up into the parking lot. He can't break the law. He works for the government. <gasps> they never do that. They've never broken the law. <laughs> what are you doing? Uh, stopping by to say hi. Oh, okay. Uh, I guess I need to buy some stuff anyway. I think the, the tension here is that uh, he just was yelling at, t at TJ like yesterday. <laughs> So it's like, uh... Oh, yeah. Do you want to say hi? That's really kind of... Is, is that the... Uh, kind of shows a, a very strange lack of awareness. I look out the window so Flynn can't see the look on his, my face. Or Flynn's just used to getting away with this. It, or Flynn is just How so... How often does he cause these he scenes? He flies off the handle so often that he's used to just acting like everything's fine and people just forgiving him because they have no other option. Yeah. And because he, he, they're all used to it by now. I already know that this is a bad idea. TJ's at the register, and his ears flick in our direction before he turns to see us. I like this background. It's very familiar. Yes, it is. As he At first he smiles when he sees me, but then his ears fall flat when he sees Flynn come in behind me. I said I studied otter anatomy. <laughs> Jenna pokes her head from behind TJ, and now I, now I know this is a really bad idea. Oh yeah, Jenna's gonna throw down. They're both a little dirty, and TJ has his backpack on. <clears throat> I wave at them to let them know that I've seen them before moving towards the back of the store. I need to get some bottled water since I don't really like drinking from the faucet in the motel. I hear Flynn say something as he walks up to them, and I silently hope that by the time I get back, everything will be magically resolved. Because the old corner market closed, this is the only place where you can buy food, aside from the diner. That's horrible. So all you have is a convenience store and a, and a diner yep. to get food? Food, food desert. desert. Yeah, I mean, I think we're spoiled because we live in... A town where the only place we can eat something green is in a McDonald's cheeseburger. That's so... Oh, that, like, we're all spoiled because we live in California here, where, like, agriculture is, like, the thing where we live. But, like, I forget... Like, this is a horrible way to live. It's really goofy that the, uh... Like I, I, the, the one line sticks with me, and I can never remember what it's from. What? The green and that were the only thing you can eat. Place it, bleh, the thing I said. Yeah, <laughs> the, the, thing only, I said. the only green thing the you can eat is said. the lettuce <laughs> in a in a McDonald's cheeseburger. See, I'm so bougie. Like, well, okay, when it comes to food, because. A. Excuse me? We have acai. Well, I mean, I'm not like that. I mean, I like having <laughs> options. I really like having lots of options for food. But I'm, I also was a vegetarian for, like, fucking, like, 20 years. You literally couldn't be I'm a pescatarian now. I would have no options here, and I don't like junk food. Like, I don't really like, like, I don't like, like, ho-hos or, like, hostess cakes. Yeah. And I don't like, I don't even like iceberg lettuce because it's, like, not actual lettuce to me. I'd have nothing to eat here. No, there's there's no baby green spinach here. 
Your and pescatarian I, I don't... nature would have you go out fishing out of one watering hole every single day to survive until you get like hum poisoning. <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah, I know. I'd probably get sick. I'd probably get myself tapeworms from eating all the fish in the canal because I have yeah. no other options. <laughs> I might even start eating people. Maybe that's what I'm doing. Because, <laughs> like. Just become the, a double Brian. I, I would, you know, it's the freshest thing around. I mean, Brian. <laughs> the only green I can get would it's be the like. The freshest <laughs> thing around. Yeah. <laughs> I can eat Flynn. He's green ish. Oh. <laughs> uh... <laughs> Where? <laughs> I don't know. I just thought. Oh, you're right. I don't know. I was, I was like lizard. <laughs> I'm like searching. I'm like, where is the green? Where is I mean, I don't. Where the green there, is? On there this might lizard. be green on him. I can find it. Like, <laughs> we can look around. <laughs> Looking around at the selection, I can see why Flynn takes the 30-minute drive to Peyton to get his food. Yeah. I would move to Peyton. Yeah. I grab a few water bottles and head back to the front. My hope of a resolution are dashed as I see the awkward situation unfolding in front of me. TJ is standing on the other side of Jenna now, keeping her between him and Flynn. No one's saying anything as I get to the register. The air tense and TJ fidgeting with his facial fur. As I pull out my wallet, I look over at Jenna. Hey, uh, how was your hike? Fine. Hot. Ah. A red fox I don't recognize takes the two dollars I hand to him. I feel Flynn shift around next to me, then I hear him take a breath. Hey, Tej, uh, did you... Hey, Flynn, did you forget what happened yesterday? I cringe. Jenna's tone is sharp, and now I just wish I could turn invisible. Huh? Can't you tell he doesn't want to talk to you? Flynn doesn't say anything. The tension is so thick in the air that I feel like I'm back in the slimy pond. The cashier fox pauses in handing me my chain, staring at Flynn and Jenna. Uh, thanks. <laughs> so awkward. I almost yell as I reach out for the money. As if the volume of my voice will make everyone forget. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Startle everyone. Thank you! <laughs> Gone! No. <laughs> no. <laughs> that would make everyone forget. <laughs> make everyone forget and provide Flynn the opportunity to escape. It doesn't work. We're not kids anymore, Flynn. You can't just treat us like crap and expect us to act like it's okay when you decide we're worth talking to again. Flynn's hunched forward, staring off to the side towards the back of the store. TJ suddenly heads for the door, and I can see his face twitching as he passes me. Aww, I'm gonna cry. Jenna follows him, past Flynn, before turning around as he reaches the door. If you want to talk to us again, then you're going to have to act like an adult and apologize. Otherwise, later. She exits, leaving us in the most awkward, painful silence I've ever heard in my life. The clerk openly stares at Flynn. I fumble with the change and my wallet, trying to pretend like nothing happened. Uh, do you wanna... Flynn turns and walks out the door. I watch him get in his truck, then pull out, his face expressionless. For a while, I stare at the empty parking space as I slowly shove my wallet into my back pocket. He just leave us here? He just left us here. <laughs> How are we getting home? <laughs> he, really did. he just left us here. The clerk, without anyone else, without anyone else to stare at, is now staring at me. <laughs> <laughs> Annoyed, I look right back at him. What? He stares back at me, expression vacant. Uh-huh. He's young, but the patchy fur and missing teeth, and the look in his eyes tells me everything I need to know. Chase is an asshole. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Chase is a massive dick. Oh my god. I suddenly realize where I am, and where I come from. And this alone quashes all the good feelings I have left for the day. Maybe he just has dental problems. Yeah. Leave the poor kid alone. He's just working at the fucking... Yeah. At the convenience store. You guys are the ones who should be judged right now. You cause a scene in public. He's just <laughs> doing his job. 
the fox in front of me practically embodies all the problems I have oh with this gosh, small town. This poor child, this poor like high schooler. He's like a teenager or something. I don't know the yet. Chase is just really, really awful. You embody everything that's wrong with this small town, you dumb hick. Yeah. Like, it's funny because I, uh, I, I think I, when when we first had some of the mean inner monologue, on some level I was like, damn, Hallie's just going. Like this is, hmm. But then over time, you really get used to Chase's voice, and you're like, oh, this is just how Chase is all the time. This is intentional, offensive, in-character writing of, like, the way that that uh, Chase always thinks about the people in this town. Well, I mean... Which is, like, on some level deserved because this tr town treated him like shit, but he doesn't... He's not like, oh, all these homophobes. He's like, like, specifically, it's like he goes after people for, like, their drug habits and things like that. I mean, I, I like, living in areas that like constantly remind me of this game like I definitely have the, you can hate where you live and you can hate where you come from and maybe where you come from doesn't have a lot of opportunity but there's still people who live there and it is yeah. it is a community made up of human beings like you can't dismiss everybody there just because you don't like where you came from or you don't like where you live I'm sure they'd all be better people if they had a better opportunities also just in the same way that you think you'd be a better person if you had better opportunities these like, are all just human beings living in a town and coping with this together it became like this, he became like darkly judgmental of everyone here, whether they deserve it or not. And like, it really, like we're now far enough in that you can really highlight the fact that like, he came here to visit, like he came back to Echo, his hometown. And it really is like exclusively just to see his, his small friend group that is dubious already on its own. And like he has, zero interest in making any kind of contact with any of the people that live in this town outside of that specific group despite knowing like tons of people like every time any character comes in like the uh like almost every single uh route specific like patreon backer character and also like people like janice he is like resentful of their presence being in the room and doesn't it is very very unhappy that they're joining the conversation every time well all i can say except darling kudzu well, what I was going to say is Kudzu would never think of people like this. <laughs> so He's making his rock garden. This is definitely a chase problem because Kudzu's out making his rock garden. And I don't think he thinks this way of the people who live in this town because Kudzu's a nice person and Chase is not. This fox in front of me practically embodies all the problems with this small town. I feel such a bizarre, intense wave of hatred for him oh, no. that I have to leave the store. <laughs> Pressing the two water bottles against my chest with one arm, I shoved my I shoved my free paw into my pocket, staring at the ground as I walked back to the hotel. Hmm. So this is a this has been like an almost a sort of like a quiet characterization throughout the whole game so far, as we just discussed. But I think they're setting something up here by making it be a dedicated scene where we engage with that thought more specifically, specifically because uh, not only does Flynn. Not only is Flynn the one person who stayed in Echo, I guess I guess Leo, but Leo's in, but Leo's I think Leo's family and business are in Peyton or something. I, I think we get stuff mixed up there. But like Flynn's like the one character who stayed in Echo the whole time, lives in Echo, isn't a weird divorced from reality rich kid, and is tied to like the even like the way that Echo's run because of his family being in like the local government and everything. So like I think we're going to have to engage with Echo more this time around. And I think that's why they stopped to really highlight this Fox character. Because setup and payoff and whatnot, that's like doing a writing and stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, because you, you have, like, they're pointing out that the characters who live in Echo represent Echo. And so having a character like Flynn live in Echo is, uh, it doesn't suit the narrative that Chase wants to think when it comes to Echo. At, at least that's, that might be kind of what they're getting at. I mean, he shows the I think well, I mean, I could be wrong. This this whole this whole uh, storyline could tell us how horrible Flynn is, but I get the impression <laughs> he's pretty much an upstanding member of the society here, at least in relationship to most people who live here. Yeah, it's it's torn cuz like Flynn's definitely a fuck up. Well, he's a fuck up he's got, in he's his got, personal life. Yeah, he's got things he needs to work through really badly. He's got some emotional problems and i don't think yeah. he works through his problems in the right way but in terms of like being a contributing member of to, like of society i think he's he's doing pretty good yeah plus he's wearing a button-down shirt <laughs> that means he's classy right and it's never closed 
That means he's ready to party. <laughs> he's classy, but he's down to party. Always open, never closed. I'm sick of him thinking he can do whatever he wants without any sort of consequence. Jenna rustles around in a drawer before using her hip to close it with a snap as she turns to me. I'll, apo I'll apologize to him once he apologizes for ruining the trip. It'll be interesting to see, if we, with in more certain terms, potentially whether or not, like Flynn's just a nepo baby who just like like just got his position, uh, because he just knows people, or if he is the most responsible character in the entire story. <laughs> I, I hope he's going by everyone else's jobs and situations. He would be immediately the most responsible character just for having that job. Well, I, I, I hope he's not a nepotism baby because I feel like. Even though it's not nepotism, I think Carl falls into that category already with having the nice life because he has family who are rich. So if you yeah. had that that kind of character, a character that has their situation because of their family, again, I think it'd be a little repetitive. Yeah, I, I, just, I just think like Jenna and TJ are probably both doing great in college, but they don't have to like make a living yet or anything, as far as I can tell. TJ had the one family that was really nice to him, from what yeah. it seems like, and Jenna had the family that fucking sucks that she had like pull herself up by her bootstraps for so she's she's respectable because she like had to work her way out of like a terrible fuck up situation chase has chase from chase what it sounds leo like had a nice both, family chase and leo are both openly neglectful of their responsibilities the moment there's something they want to do more yes well because they're both selfish yeah it's like chase never ever ever does his uh project on this thing and doesn't seem engaged with anything he seems to be like just drifting aimlessly through life anyway and like, like whatever, Jenna suggested something once. I guess it's my whole direction in life now. He doesn't like people if they're inconvenient to him. And it's pretty clear that Leo was just abandoning his work for the entire <laughs> for the entire week uh, to hang out with Chase in his route, and also in uh, Jenna's route when he's wanted by the police. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for, for breaking property because he threw a little tantrum. But he did it for true love. <laughs> He, he broke the pinball machine for true love, and he skipped his job for true love. Doesn't that make him, like, a hero or something? I believe he believes that. <laughs> yeah, I think he does, Which is the too. problem. <laughs> we'll work something out. <laughs> I open my mouth and close it again. Of course, asking Jenna to make up with Flynn is a lost cause. It's like asking Carl to take off his beanie. He can't anymore. It's, it's, bore, it's just grown in. Yeah, I wonder if he just hasn't tried for so long that when he goes to pull it off, it's, like, fused. Like, yeah, it's his like hair, when a, it's his like hair when has tree, grown into it. It's like when a tree grows through something. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, well, that's just there now. <laughs> no, oh my gosh, his beanie's not even a beanie anymore. It's just his hair. It's just fused into a beanie. It's like it's like JoJo's where they have the hat. Yeah. The hat that looks like the hair and it fuses into itself. It's like that. I'm still 100%. Like Jotaro Kujo's hat. I'm still 100% in club. That's not a beanie. It's definitely like a do rag or a bandana or yeah. whatever. Like it's it looks too loose and like he's tied it over. I don't I don't trust it. Yeah, the, the way the fabric sits. It doesn't, doesn't seem pass right. the sniff test. <laughs> you want to sniff it? No. <laughs> Sitting on the bed, I glance at the bathroom door. The faint sounds of TJ's shower coming from within. He showers more than any other human being. This is toaster levels of showering, <laughs> just nonstop. I hear Jenna sigh before the bed wobbles as she takes a seat next to me. I'd probably feel bad if he hadn't fucked everything up already. I rub the back of my neck with a hand, trying to think of something I can say to convince her. It's just... It's just that Flynn is always like that. He doesn't mean anything bad. Yeah, well I'm sick of having to deal with it. He needs to learn how to not talk like an asshole. This is one of the reasons why Flynn never fucks with Jenna, or really says anything to her at all. What did she say? What did he say to Jenna? Oh, when he was complaining about everyone. Yeah. Uh, sh fuck. What did he say? Did he? No, he he had to. He went through everybody. Did he? I think he's probably just saying this. Maybe maybe he's saying that. Oh, he said something about. I don't remember. Was it something about her like avoiding her family? Oh, it's probably just about her abandoning everyone, yeah. Yeah, like her he just running left. away yeah. to be better than everyone else. Like she thinks she's better than everyone else, maybe. Yeah, it's probably about how she just left. Yeah. It's been so long. <laughs> remember 500 routes ago? 
three hundred thousand <laughs> words. <laughs> she's kind of she's kind of exempt from the whole unspoken pact she made to just let Flynn's dickishness slide. Even sensitive TJ accepts it and takes the playful ribbing well enough. Uh. <laughs> Dude, I would just I would just avoid that person. Is it normally playful ribbing? I hear the shower shut off, followed by the high-powered whoosh of the hotel's cheap dryer. Being a lynx, TJ had to stand in that thing for a good ten minutes before he was even damp. Ugh. That's just an eternity. Ha. Huh. It's very funny to me that this is the one tied, the one thing that connects. Echo and that Astra is the, uh, the the furry the furry dryers at the even at even at a shitty shower there's a, there's a furry dryer. Well, I I mean I really like like I like that world building a lot. Yeah, in it'd um, be so loud. It would be so loud that you'd be waking up people in the next rooms. Yeah, that's I mean that's probably <laughs> just a common problem. Maybe people we'll just take their showers at reasonable times because no. they just know. Um, I, I think about like Chase's middle of the night shower and like, oh you guys are all awake now. I'm like what the fuck. So like I've been I've been interning at a veterinary clinic, but what I think is interesting that I had never seen before is they have a uh, on the bottom of the wall where like the um, the molding for the wall would be, they have this little little pocket that's actually a vacuum. So in places where you have a lot of hair, like I imagine that this would be like really helpful in like hair cutting places or like dog grooming salons. You can just push the broom up to the side of the wall and it sucks all the hair off the broom into this like into the wall where I guess there's just some compartment where that they empty every once in a while. So there's a wall vacuum for floor hair. For floor hair. <laughs> so so instead of like it's just such an effort pro pro present problem for them. Well, I'm so instead of having to like use a little dustpan, you just push it up against this little thing. You push the the button with your foot and it turns on the little suction <laughs> and it sucks it all off the broom. I think that Furry should incorporate that into their world building because that makes so much sense. When I saw it, I was like, "Oh my gosh, this is the coolest thing I'd ever Self -cleaning seen." Self-cleaning rooms. It's fucking. It was so sick. We should all just have one of those. Everyone's Roombas would die instantly in the setting. Yeah, they would stand. Honestly, they would not stand a chance. seem kind of useless anyway. I feel like they, they, their capacity yeah. is so small that like Roombas what do they are extremely even do? gimmicky. It, I don't really get it. My dog wouldn't like it, so I'm not allowed to have one. She told me. <laughs> she told me. She, she she told me. She said, "Stephanie, don't get a room, but I'm not gonna like it." And I that said, was the first I and said, last time she ever spoke. <laughs> yeah, and I said, "Okay, duly noted." <laughs> We're adults now. If he wants to get anywhere in life, he needs to shape up. He's getting along all right. Been a snorts. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, if he's planning to stay here for the rest of his life. I mean. What's wrong with that, Chase? You were the one who were you were just talking <laughs> shit about this, Chase. Yeah, like this is normally an acceptable statement, technically, and and you normally could push back against Jenna specifically because like she's letting her stuff get in the way, but Chase is so disingenuous to say this. What do you <laughs> mean? Him. What's wrong with that? Who would ever have a problem with Echo? Says two of the two people who have huge problems with Echo. Yeah. I can tell Jenna's giving me a look. But I don't give her the satisfaction of turning my head to see it. Seriously? Anyway, it's a clear it's clearly a defense mechanism. He feels vulnerable without his I'm an asshole blanket. <laughs> it's like an anti-shock blanket. <laughs> it's a, it's a it's a shock comedy blanket. I want it. I'm an asshole blanket. <laughs> <laughs> it just it just looks like the gel silica packet, but with the text changed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do not eat. I'm an asshole. I'm an asshole. <laughs> Leave me alone. I'm Do an asshole. Do not consume. <laughs> <laughs> just a Dessa, just fucking bundled up in an I'm an asshole blanket. <laughs> Well, it's like, you know, it's like, I'm not in the mood to talk. If I talk right now, I'm going to be a jerk because I'm in an angry mood. So I just put the blanket I'm over my angry. head and I walk around the house and then nobody can talk to me. Yeah. I mean, you're not a psychiatrist yet, Jenna. I'm not going to be a psychiatrist, but you don't need a psych degree to see it. I don't respond. Not seeing the point in arguing about Flynn anymore. A psychiatrist can prescribe medication. <clears throat> so she's not being that. Yeah, she's gonna be a veterinarian, which raises questions. <laughs> that would what be weird. What does that mean? So a doctor. <laughs> Jenna stretches. 
then gets up to go over to her laptop on the small table while I lay back on the bed, closing my eyes. Absent-mindedly, I pull my phone out, discovering a text from Leo. I forgot to tell you that you were having a surprise party this, uh, for... We, that we, we are having a surprise party <laughs> for Carl tomorrow. That we're having... Yeah, the train wreck of typing here. I forked to. Forked to... I forked to tell that we're having a surprise party for Carl tomorrow. It's kind of endearing. I like his fuck-ups. I just... I can't... I, I know this is... I know it's work to make the plugin work to, like, mod Renp to have phones and stuff like that. But, like... I can't get over the fucking... the line I, spacing. I know. It's so... Why are the lines so far apart on this phone? <laughs> They're so spread out. Hey, you gotta suspend disbelief, you know? they ha TJ's in, like, a giant... Whose phone looks like he, that. He's in a giant dryer right now. You get to yeah. send disbelief to leave the spacing slightly larger on text messages. Yeah. Also, you're going to tell me that Chase doesn't have, like, a gay background on his phone. Like, any kind of backing thing. It's just... It's just black. And he doesn't have a... I don't, most, I don't have a background most, for text messages. The most crushing thing we've, we've learned about uh, Chase is that when you play Route 65, he has art for Flynn in, in his phone... Flynn has a as an avatar, which, yeah. which, which, we, which is burning my brain because it was like, oh, it's old Flynn. It's, it's a version of Flynn that never shows up in any version of the current game, including around 60, 65. His thing for Leo is just an L. He doesn't have a picture <laughs> of Leo in his phone. Yeah, the like, his like long-term ex-boyfriend guy who has a million is, pictures of. That is so damning that he doesn't have a picture of Leo in his phone. Leo would cry if he knew that. I frown and type out a quick response. Leo's Leo's probably says like handsome handsome sweet Chase heart 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 like his his like description for Chase probably isn't <laughs> even just Chase it's probably like my love heart 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 and he probably has like a picture of Chase's dick as his <laughs> as his it's, little it's icon is a, a picture of Chase sleeping as this as oh, the so as creepy. the morning as the morning sun comes in through his window yeah it's like it's from the outside of the window <laughs> he took the picture from outside the window at, and at just his dorm Chase sleeping it's Chase sleeping in his dorm room <laughs> <laughs> he took through his picture of the window <laughs> no you're telling us this now it's not until next month what's up. <clears throat> Jenna looks up from her laptop at the expression on my face. Leo says we're having a surprise party for Carl tomorrow. Oh, yeah. You knew? Well, yeah. Leo told us on the drive back from the river. He when Carl was in the car? <laughs> it wasn't Carl in the car! <laughs> it wasn't Car- Wait, was it Carl in the car in that scene? <laughs> they dropped Carl off first? <laughs> Is that what she means? Maybe Carl was sitting in the- in the like, truck bed. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Like a I'm dog. Just, I'm just like, how did- how- wait. <laughs> Ex explain, McSkinny. <laughs> explain. <laughs> My phone buzzes again. Sorry, but we were going to the store tomorrow to get some presents, so don't worry about it. I frown. So don't worry about it. Doesn't that mean we have to worry about it? Apostrophes don't, but not we're. Eh. Uh. You know, I don't know. You get close to someone, you you say fuck it to grammar in text messages. I I don't. Oh, even it's because it's because autocorrect would fix don't because there is no apostrophe-less don't word. Oh yeah, but it wouldn't fix work. So there's realistic. We weird. crack the code. Oh, that, the, 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 the attention to detail. Well, then why didn't forgot get fixed? <laughs> it's, it's okay. It's auto capsing the first letter, so we know it's like it's it's machine assisted typing. <laughs> yeah, because Leo wouldn't do that himself. No one would. It's weird. It is weird. Like, I don't. I, I have a, my biggest gripe is that is when it auto it auto capitalizes LOL, with just the first letter. Does it? Yeah. If you start a sentence with LOL, or if you if you if you end a sentence, then type LOL. It capitalizes the L. I'm like, ugh. Ugh. Oh yeah, I guess. Yeah, I don't know. I don't really think about that one. Too it has much. to be all lowercase. If it's all capitalized, it sounds like it sounds a little mean. If if it's Which, all capitalized, it's it like sounds mean. It's like explosive. Or it sounds like someone's aunt sent it because they they like they oh it's so funny yeah. L O L. But if just do, the do, L is do. capitalized, it's like Ugh, what is, I don't like the feeling of that on my eyes. <laughs> it's uncomfortable. I'm gonna send you a bunch of those now. <laughs> it's like <a> personal attack. <laughs> this is kind of weird. A whole month early. 
Jenna shrugs and looks back at, down at her laptop. Something to do, I guess. I guess. Is he still trying to get with us? Is that why? Is that his motivation for doing this again? Uh, either way, we're gonna have another uncomfortable breaking into Carl's house. Sorry, scene. Carl. Or maybe because he said it in the car, Carl, <laughs> Carl. finally knows this time, <laughs> so he'll uh, intentionally lock the door. He's like, they're like surprised. And he's like, oh, guys, I know about this already. Welcome to the route where Carl locks the window. Carl has a gun ready. <laughs> it's loaded with rock salt. <laughs> He's like, kss, kss, bad. He like squirts water at them, like, kss, get out of my house. <laughs> shoo, He's shoo. Pump Leo full of rock salt and bury him in his backyard. I type another response to Leo again. Bury him in Janice's backyard. There are people who are too young for that reference. We never got follow up on that. Yeah, I was so confused about that. I can that. only assume. That since there was never a follow up on that, it must have been a grave for Samuel. She's like acting out about her memories oh, there. I get, but know. I thought it was a setup for something in that route. I thought like, Janice Julie was gonna go fucked. off the off the rails that route. <laughs> yeah. I thought it was gonna be a Janice route. Like we had the meat scene with Janice before, and then we had the grave scene. So I'm like. Julian's just gonna disappear in this route, isn't he? <laughs> He's just gonna be in that grave suddenly. <laughs> gonna Dude. kill we're gonna kill the Kickstarter backer. <laughs> I, I was like I just I was ready for Janice to be unhinged Janice. Yeah. I was like ready, I was like excited to voice unhinged Janice. Yeah. I mean like if, if I was if I was a Patreon backer for a horror game, I would wanna be one of the I would want a red shirt. I would want I, I would wanna be at least in some routes I'd wanna die horribly. That's like the fun. <laughs> uh like what happened? Well, I'm sure you can commission the art of your character dying horribly. There's just like a severe lack of bad things happening to these characters for the most part until fucking Kudzu gets executed. You're like, oh! Yeah, that caught me off guard because not only was Kudzu like genuine good boy, but like, I was like, whoa, shit. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. Yeah, of the characters that have been wounded or killed, they've been attacked by the Echo cast specifically. <laughs> I think Raven got stabbed by Jenna in the, like, it's like implied he got stabbed or something in the bad ending. The the less bad ending. The bad ending where we live to the end as opposed to the bad ending where we die early. I think Raven gets stabbed but doesn't, isn't oh, actually yeah. dead. Yeah, and then Micah gets hurt. He gets shot. Micah gets pretty fucked up. Uh, I, oh, wait, no, Micah, yeah, Micah can get killed by Heather, huh? Uh, there actually are more bad moments with these characters. Oh, no. Oh, so Micah always gets shot through the wing through or the something. the wing, yeah, he doesn't die. Yeah. But he does get shot. Remember. Um, Fucking Deer Boy. Nothing but Deer Boy was the one I wanted to get, to get shot at. Damn. I'm sorry, I'm just kidding. This for I'm this sorry, person. guy. I'm sorry, whoever you are out there. Yeah, that's just... I'm, it's, I guess, just it's just not my type. It, we all have our types. Yeah. Red Panda was pretty cute. I'm just. I'm. I guess I'm I surprised... I like Red Panda Boy. I'm surprised that the horror elements don't attack I like the, the cat, the, cat the guest characters. Barker. As, I'm surprised that the really horror elements don't attack the guest characters as much, but I guess I think they might be doing a thing. I think you can. I think you can trace like a motivation and a logic in the genre to to the behaviors of each of the monsters, and so it probably would break the story if they attacked the Patreon characters. But I'm, I'm not totally sure. I want that Cat requires... Carnival Barker to come back. <laughs> just, just at the ending. I, he's the mastermind behind everything. Wow, you guys look like you've had a week. <laughs> Woo! Still gonna cost a quarter, though. <laughs> the fucking Flynn ending where they go back to the the, the carnival. carnival. He's like, oh, you guys look like shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have a lot to do tomorrow. Oh, I was that, planning that, to get chase. This chase. What? This chase talking. Oh, damn it. I have a lot to do. Uh, the <laughs> Just slow down. I have a lot to do tomorrow. I was planning to go to get some footage in the morning. <laughs> yeah, that's the funniest joke of the whole game. It just becomes narrative irony every single time. Just like, ha, the Chase thinks he's going to do his project for 30 seconds. Leo's always been weird. Do you follow any of his accounts? He's always posting pics of his food and stuff. That's normal, what? Jenna. What? What food? What food? His TV dinners? Is he taking pictures of his TV dinners? He goes and to the diner. Them? Dude, that's that's how you get sympathy. You want to make people feel real sad for you? Just start posting pictures of TV dinners. <laughs> uh, I think you're just gonna get. I don't think I. They might feel bad for you for a moment, but if you keep posting gross pictures, people are just gonna like mute you. There's a lot of. And you'll stop showing up on their timeline. Facebook line. account. There are people who like, oh, look at this good food I made, and everyone is like secretly just like, oh god, it looks horrible. Yeah. 
But like, if you if you it, like if you if if you're a uh, main character of constantly putting unappealing stuff on on people's timeline, you're just gonna get like soft unfollowed by a lot of people that like want to be like because of whatever connection they have to you, they want to like be seen still following you, so you don't like notice that they that that they're not friends anymore or whatever on Facebook or whatever place. But they're gonna like click the buttons that make you stop showing up, <laughs> so that they don't have to look at the stuff anymore. Yeah, you want to get me to not follow you. Post a gross picture of food, and you will never <laughs> hear from me again. Post wet bread. Oh God, no! A goldfish cracker in the sink, all mushed up. I'm right out. Jesus Christ. Ugh. My phone buzzes again. I guess I can get the present for you, but you're definitely going to be uh, going to the party, and then we're going to go out to see a movie. So we're is never apostrophed, but your is also not apostrophed, but don't was apostrophed. My, my lore is gone. It's broken. Some people understand don't and can't, but do not understand your and we're. Your and we're is a little bit more advanced but it's than not, don't but and it, can't. But it's not the wrong your. It's just a. It's just the correct your without apostrophe. Yeah, but for some reason people don't like. I feel like I still think like where to put the apostrophe sometimes fucks people up on we're and your. Just with the total lack of punctuation, I'm just convinced that the don't was autocorrected to have an apostrophe. So I'm just like, why is this phone dropping the ball on your? We're what's, getting what's really deep into the lore, yeah. the phone lore of this yeah. game. I like getting into the lore of that stuff. It's interesting. So something that this is—it's—it's it's the dumbest thing ever, but it fucks with me all the time. Is that in the game Outer Worlds, the uh, the one from the creators of like New Vegas and all that, every level, and not even every level, like every room practically, like clearly the emails were written by different people, and so the emails just have a different format. And what drives me crazy is the emails are like a—it's it, it, instead of being an individual email, it'll be a series of replies that are nested inside of each other, like how. <laughs> <laughs> like how those kinds of emails work, you know what I mean? The ones that show the thing you're applying to under the email. Yeah. But the order in which they show up chronologically, top to bottom, will change from computer to computer and, like, room to room. Oh, that would they were, fuck me up. Because they're clearly just text documents that are dumped into the game, but they didn't agree on their formatting in advance. So it's inconsistent what order you're supposed to read them in, and it, it's infuriating. <laughs> it's so frustrating to, re to try to read them aloud to the audience and stuff. And you're like, why... Why isn't why don't they why aren't they real figure out how emails work in this universe and frankly it should just work how they do here. That's good mash art. The, uh, <laughs> we have the uh, there's a continuous feed of uh, the Discord channel usually the furry channel in my Discord uh, just on the other monitor while we're here and it's extremely active right now. <laughs> it's, it's popping off. But somebody got a ref sheet from Mash the person what does most of my thumbnails. Brewing did. And that the, the, the Mash does good art. Shocker. Shocker. Ow, my, ow, my ankle. Alright. Gonna go see a movie. We're gonna go watch Ad Astra. Whoa! I still don't know what Ad Astra's like in this setting, because it can't... I Does it start with a really avant-garde POV perspective of, like... Perspective... Of, point of view perspective uh, of, bup, 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 bup. A, of a weird, invented, alien creature called a human. <laughs> being isekai into uh, Oh yeah, into a, I forgot that it would have to be like that. <laughs> yeah. Like, One, the beginning of an Astro takes place on Earth, which is seemingly where we are in Echo. So we know that this isn't the same setting as that Astra. But there's no humans in, in Echo. So like, there's no humans in this setting, but Astra stars a human, like specifically. So like, how did, how... How is there an Ad Astra movie? What was that from? That was TJ's background, right? TJ's. Yeah, it was like, that was the one where they yeah. went to go see with with, with Heather and right. it was his bad date. Yeah, so I guess I guess we're not watching Ad Astra then. Because that was I was like, it's an old movie now. Yeah, I remember that we saw Ad Astra at some point in the series, so I thought that that'd be like, oh, it's that, that part of the timeline. But that was like ten, that was like five years ago. It's probably just another superhero movie. I mean, I think it, you could, I could see like a movie coming out right now. Like in like oh like Pixar's new movie, but it's about an alien who's living his alien life, and then humans abduct it. Whoa, way to like. It's actually been eight years since TJ's date, so now it's time for for the sequel to Ad Astra, where Marco and Amicus find each other again. Well, they gotta tell me how that goes, cause <laughs> I'm in the dark on that still. <laughs> but uh, I wonder if like you know like aliens being like greys, you know like the grey aliens that we all know that it's like the archetype. 
I yeah. wonder if humans are like that to them. They're just like some kind of archetypical, like fleshy man thing. They have little keychains with like little they're little weird humans lack on of them, snouts. and they have like you know they have like little like t t shirts that like have like little instead of an alien face, it's like a human face. People just collect these like weird little nude human plushies. <laughs> That'd be fun. I'd buy this. Your human suit, like a fursona, would just be. It would just be Ew. texture. That's Ew. it. There'd be no clothes. <laughs> tan, tan latex, like that you shovel your fur into. <laughs> I hate that. They just cover you. Just, just flesh-colored masking tape across your whole body, just to wrap you up. Ew. <laughs> I don't like any of this. <laughs> I suppose that doesn't sound too bad, as long as I'm able to get at least something done for the project. <laughs> Something's so still funny. bothering me about the whole get together, though. Is it because the, 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 the was explosively bad? Is it because there's no consent? You had like to this party. You had like one okay day at the carnival where you bled a lot because TJ ravaged you, and then and then your friendships bled because Flynn did this, and you're supposed to go on with your week. the The impact of the whole route system is I keep kind of forgetting about the carnival being canonical every time. Yeah, I fucking forget about that all the <laughs> There's time. There's a whole intro to this game that happened every time, but I only remember the lake, or the river, because that's where the, that's the route split cause. It's, it's hard to think back to all the way fucking, wow. We went to go see, like, a... Like a, a Did we start this a, in October a, a, or something? We went to see, like, a dolphin show, but it was implied that it was it was anthropomorphic yeah, it was, animals. Yeah, and so there's a whole otter part, and Chase has this whole thing about otters being seen as these, like, dopey performers... Like dance monkey dance sort of situations. I want to be the the clown genre of animal. Like, you that choose which cool. shoulder to sleep on. Because he has a sleeping disorder. I, I would still pick Carl. I can go to the party, but I might need to stay and do some more project stuff. What about Flynn? I send that one with some hesitation, feeling like me and Leo are conspiring behind Flea, behind Flynn's back. Then I remember what I did behind Leo's back with Flynn, and my toes curl reflexively in a cringe. <laughs> behind Leo's back, you're not dating. Yeah, well, see, that's what he's saying right now. Yeah, technically it's none of Leo's business what I do, but it doesn't change the feeling of wrongness I have about it. You're not dating! You've specifically broken up with him, you're so bad at this. I toy with the idea of texting Flynn as well, but knowing him, he probably won't respond right now. I am sorry. To you, at least. I look up from my phone at Jenna, who's clacking busily away at her laptop. For what? Her typing pauses. Because pissing Flynn off like that is just going to make this an even shittier vacation. I sigh and look back down at my phone, waiting for Leo's response. Well, I don't know. I guess he needed to hear it from someone. My phone buzzes again. I had a talk with him, it's fine. Did you guys Period. fuck? Did you guys fuck? Cause... The first punctuation. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. Oh, that makes it seem uh, uh, passive aggressive. I'm about to say something else to Jenna, but I can hear TJ starting to open the door, so I just shut my mouth and close my eyes again. That reflection. I know, I love the little flash of, <sighs> of face there. You, get so, you, get, you see so little of Chase in these games. That's, that's fine. I don't need to see that goatee. I can do without. This was, Every single time, the party is like the primer for the idea of how horrifying this all might get. The It's a primer for their disjointed relationships as a group. Flynn is... Hey man. Flynn is just so frustrating, though, because like... He blew up on everybody, so the but the idea that someone's just going to call him out on it for one moment, and in a way that's not even as severe as how he behaved, is going to make the trip worse, is just so like, this is not a good relationship. <laughs> this is not a good dynamic to have. Like, that kind of person's so fucking rough. Well, it means that, like, you know, you have this person who's being problematic consistently, but no one, A, no one feels comfortable talking to him about it, and B, he's obviously very uncomfortable talking about it. Because when he gets confronted about it, he can't talk about it either. So you guys just have, like, this looming elephant in the room of, like, the potential of hurt feelings constantly. Because yeah. no one's going to ever 
solve this problem or like reprimand him for this or prevent this from happening. Like it's going to be a consistent problem because no one has like the balls to stop it fundamentally. Yeah, it's like there's no You have a ticking time bomb friend. Yeah. It's bad to have any kind of situation where you're just kind of always tiptoeing around a particular topic, basically, because you just, just, if you ever acknowledge it, it just becomes a problem. But then it also never gets resolved. And so yeah. it's just always looming. It's like, cool, this is a good dynamic. Can't wait to spend more time here. 